and then all of the latest videos. Oh, okay. So that's right. Oh, good. And uh, any particular videos that, uh, with regard to the Orion Nebula, that would be um, uh, preferenced? Yeah, the, the the best one to look at is called uh, "Is the Orion Nebula Home to a Stargate." And that's pretty much the, I say I produced that one on November 27th, so it's pretty recent. And it really goes into a high level of detail and analysis around all these churches and what I'm seeing. And I believe it's probably the, the one that it's communicated the best so far. Yeah. And, um, what do you think of the, uh, impl- implications, Danny? Are they, um, are they trying to, uh, show their scientific know-how? Are they trying to teach us some spiritual wisdom? Um, what are the full implications, do you think, of this? Well, you know, if you take a look at it, uh, outside of the church, it's not just the church that this is happening in. It's happening outside of the church as well, in other works of art. So when we say they, you know, we have to understand that they may not be just the church, it may be some other thing communicating to us because Salvador Dali put it in his paintings. Um, I even found the same Orion Nebula, and you may not have seen this one yet, Santos, but uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, the album that Led Zeppelin put out called Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> okay, well, I am, because I'm one of the biggest fans on the planet of uh, Led Zeppelin. Uh, let's talk about that. We'll hold that thought after the break. Okay, welcome back. It's Santos Bonacci speaking with uh, special guest uh, Danny Wilson. And um, very honoured to have you here, Danny, uh, speak about this, because I'm very excited. I'm very excited about it. Uh, as you know, you've seen uh, my presentations, and you know what I... Uh, do with um, astrotheology and um, like many other um, great uh, um, like uh, Jordan Maxwell, uh, Michael Tassarian, these great guys who have been around for decades. Um, we, we owe a lot to people like this for showing us how uh, astrotheology is um, hiding in there when you take note of the mythologies and the Bibles and the scriptures, etc. Uh, so I've shown uh, many, many points on uh, astrotheology in my presentations, and this is absolutely uh, complementary to the work that I'm doing. So for the listeners who have just hopped on, um, Danny Wilton's uh, YouTube um, site is Starscreen233. Now, I'll just... Um, uh, the address is 5T4RSCREAN233. Is that cool. right, Daniel? At, um, Danny, would you like to just uh, mention anything about your YouTube uh, videos and account? Yeah, that's correct. And, uh, you know, I'm really happy that this work is complementary to what you're doing. And, you know, when I started uh, doing a lot of this stuff, when I first presented this particular material a while back, it was a very, very hard sell because I didn't have much to compare to. But then recently, when I dug into the architecture of the uh, Carl's Kurtz Church, I found that there's uh, some kind of an influence with Bernini in all of these different uh, cathedrals. And I don't know what the correlation is there, but even though we have different artists, we have this influence of Bernini. And so when I first started covering this stuff, was not able to get a lot of people to agree to you know, what I was seeing. But after I was able to compare it to several different churches and show, and I guess with with better depictions of what I was seeing in Orion, they finally were able to see what I was seeing. And so that made me very happy. And that's where I've really started expanding out lately. Um, you know, as the ninth wave with Coleman was happening, I was really involved with that. And, uh, and so I covered the ninth wave very closely. And then as this started picking up, this is where my, uh, I guess most of my, favorite research has been 
And so I'm really happy that people are starting to take notice of it, especially um, knowing that it's complementary to what you're doing makes me very happy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. To to notice that, um, that they've given so much attention to this particular constellation, and I believe um, they're trying to tell us something. Because in astrotheology, most of the action, and in the Gospels, most of the action is happening between Aries and Gemini. Now, I'm about to post a new video on my YouTube account, which is Mr. Astro Theology, and uh, it should be posted by uh, the next 24 hours, and it's dealing with Astro Theology. Well, that's great. I'll definitely one be watching it. one I posted it. last week was dealing with astrology. Yeah. Now, you'll, you'll notice a few interesting things in this one. I've put some very interesting things, and in particular, I have, um, I have shared in this presentation, the work of a gentleman called Reverend Bill Darlison. And he, I have the book in my hands right now. He's called this book The Gospel and the Zodiac. Mm, very interesting title. Very interesting. And the uh, subtitle is, <laughs> the subtitle is The Secret Truth About Jesus. Now, what he is um, establishing in this book is that the Gospel of Mark, begin in Aries. And so I've presented this, I've spent a whole hour um, showing the proofs that uh, the Reverend Bill Darlison has um, shared in his book with regard to the Gospel of Mark. If you take notice of the four Gospels, two of them, i.e. Matthew and Luke, begin with a nativity scene. Little baby Jesus in the manger, and there's always uh, sheep around, shepherds, there's the three wise men, there's always a star, the star of Bethlehem that uh, resides above this, this, the manger where Jesus is born. I've shown all this to the astrotheology. But uh, this particular book, The Gospel and the Zodiac, explains that Mark does not begin with a nativity scene, neither does John, the two Gospels. Now, if you look at the word Mark, the name Mark, um, you can see the same root of Mars. That's true. Mars and March. Yeah. So March the 21st is when all the action begins, you see, at the equinox. And it opens up this very, very peculiarly powerful quadrant of the skies of Aries, Taurus, uh, famous and the most observed section of stars in history is this particular spring quadrant of stars. And of course, Gemini is no less glorious than Aries and Taurus because the two twins, Pollux and Castor, these are the divine and um, the human. Of course, uh, Castor was not divine. He was mortal. But these were the sons of Zeus, you see, Jupiter. So Jupiter's in there, he's definitely in there, in the quadrant, as the father of these two. And the twins, of course, were always known to be the um, the guiding stars of the ancient world, Pollux and Castor. So uh, um, I've explained in my presentation how um, all of a sudden uh, the Gospel of Mark begins with a fully grown Jesus. No nativity scene, uh, no, um, you know, uh, winter solstice scenery where the other two Gospels begin. But they begin with Mark. Mark meaning Mars. <laughs> March. <laughs> so it's a Gospel that tells you that it's beginning in March, in the spring. And you see, it begins, uh, John's uh, gospel is very, very interesting because there you have John the Baptist in the first verse. In fact, um, chapter 1, verses 27 of the gospel of John, you have John the Baptist saying, See, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Well, that's in reference to Aries, the Lamb, you see. And also, um, uh, the next constellation, Orion. Orion was considered to be the Lamb, the Lamb of God, you see. 
And so this is very, very interesting. I'm sure that um, on a uh, scientific level, because it's all science, this is going to have major implications for the world. So uh, what what do you think of that, uh, Danny? I think it's amazing the way you put that stuff together. <laughs> I think it's actually amazing, and I think we all have our uh, our places where we put that stuff together. I wanted to get your opinion on one thing: the uh, in what you see in these churches, what you see depicted as the Trinity. You see the Trinity as that you either see it as a dove, or you see it as that tetragrammatron, or you see it um, uh, you see it as that bright spot that's in the middle there. So what do you make of the idea that that bright spot is being depicted as the Holy Spirit or God for whatever reason? Well, uh, as I said before, the pineal uh, gland corresponds to the uh, Pleiades because it's the throne of God and it's always been known to be the organ, the spiritual organ, uh, which we know very little about, uh, which is the throne of God. Now... What the pineal gland does is something very, very uh, interesting. It secretes DMT, dimethyltryptamine. And, um, of course, most plants uh, have some degree of uh, dimethyltryptamine. But in particular, certain plants like um, psilocybin, mushrooms, I believe, um, uh, there's many eucalyptus plants, etc., that have very, very, very high levels of DMT. Now, this is what's causing us to have dreams and visions, you see. Dreams come from this when we sleep. Our pineal gland secretes this. And um, so this is why they call it the, the third eye, the eye that has visions, you see, because our physical eyes, they don't have the, these kind of visions, you see. We see things spiritually through the pineal gland. So, uh, look, uh, that's the um, the the, um, the end of the hour now. We'll take a break. Okay. Uh, with that in mind, we'll come back to that because um, this is some very heavy, uh, heavy uh, duty stuff. So, thank you, Danny, and we'll see you on the other side at um, the hour and we'll open the uh, phone lines. Thank you. Sounds great. Thanks, Santos. <laughs> 